Skyblock has quite a few bosses. You've got slayers, different dragons, a big spider, and of course, who could forget? Big mans. <laughs> I'm big mans. <laughs> but which would you say is the hardest boss of all? Maybe the tier 4 Void Gloom. I mean, he even makes fun of you for being short. Or maybe the tier 4 Inferno Demon Lord. Oh, no, wait, I can't do this one. I haven't even beaten a tier 3 yet. Or what about the Headless Horseman? Oh my god, guys, there he is. The strongest boss in all of Skyblock, and he's dead. In my opinion, the strongest bosses are definitely the ones in dungeons, more specifically, the ones in Master Mode floors. Remember the tier 4 Void Gloom from before? He deals 21,000 damage per second. Wow, that's a lot. Well, here's a squiggly boy, and he does. Uh, just a bit, just a bit more damage, you know, just a bit more. But Powliner, this is a dungeon mob. And in dungeons, your stats are way higher. So that's not even that impressive. Okay, let's take a look at a brave adventurer taking one on then. Our adventurer is Catacombs level 43, giving him a 347% boost to all the stats his armor and weapons provide. He appears to have stumbled upon an unexplored room, brimming with danger. Battle ensues, the brave adventurer seems to be winning the fight, until... Oh no! He didn't spot a fell stealthily hiding in the corner. But it's okay, he still has more than half his HP left. And now, he no longer has more than half his HP left, because he is dead. Because 240k damage really do be 240k damage. You get what I'm saying? It's still a lot. And this Fells guy ain't even a boss, he's just a regular mob. Meaning that you can find groups of them and get instantly deleted. He's not the only danger either. You got rooms full of tanky Withermancers who shoot homing projectiles that two-shot you. Snipers that'll snipe you from 2 billion blocks away and many bosses who you gotta freeze in place to even stand a chance against, because otherwise, you'll be the one getting frozen in place. And by that, I mean you'll die, you'll be very dead. A shadow assassin, what a fool, I'm not scared of you. Okay, now that I think about it, maybe I am a bit scared. Wait, what's happening? Someone's reviving me? Who could it be? It's me, <laughs> Powliner, the subscribe button man. Wow! Thanks, man. And all I ever wanted in life was for you to click me. Do it. Also, click on my, my dear friend, the, the like button here. He okay, that's enough. My point is that master mode is difficult. Pretty much every mob in the last few floors has tens of millions of HP. And I do around 15 million damage with my Terminator. Uh oh, not enough. But wait, the next shot I did 57 million? Wait, now it's 113 million? That's gotta be a bug, right? That's insane! That's a bug! It's not a bug. You see, there's this funny little enchant called Soul Eater. And what it does is add 10 times the damage of the last mob killed onto your next shot. Which honestly doesn't sound that insane. By killing a Master Mode 7 Fells, you'd gain 2.4 million damage for one shot only, which is essentially nothing. Wow. But the description hides one very important fact. This damage is further boosted by your crit damage stat. So it's not 2.4 million bonus damage, it's actually 92.4 million bonus damage. Long story short, Soul Eater Gug. Anyways, Master Mode has 7 different floors, most of which I don't really care about. So let's speed through the first few. Master Mode 1 is... Uh, it really, it really is. There's a clown you kill, and then he resurrects, and so you kill him again. 
awesome. Master mode 2 used to be really funny because instead of doing the intended 67,000 damage, the warrior's charge attack was bugged to do 67,000 true damage, meaning he'd run you over no matter who you were. It is I, Jeff Bezos, the President of the United States. I am very powerful and bald. Overall, this floor sucks. Don't play it. I mean, you couldn't even if you tried because literally no one else is playing it. Master Mode 3 features a bunch of overweight fish and a funny looking man who you freeze and pin in the corner and then shoot until he dies. And then he fuses with the overweight fish and dies again. These three floors either suck pee and poo or are a decent floor for farming catacombs XP. But we can do better. Master Mode 4 is really complicated, but also really cool. But also, also, I've already dedicated an entire video to it, so go watch that if you're interested. Remember the spirit bear. Good floor though. And Master Mode 5 really is interesting because it's so boring that uh, no one has ever actually finished it. Okay, now we're at the big daddy floors. Master Mode 6 is where things start to get really rough. As mentioned before, none of the mobs here care about your feelings or opinions and will instantly pulverize you if you mess up. The main reason I'm playing this floor is to get a lot of Catacombs XP and eventually get strong enough to take on the final boss of dungeons. But there's a problem. Me. I'm not the best player. You see, dungeons are basically just a randomly generated grid of rooms and have many different possible rooms that can spawn. These consist of normal rooms filled with enemies, puzzle rooms, trap rooms, monkey rooms, Oh, wait, no, that's classified information. I, I wasn't supposed to reveal that. But the vast majority of the dungeon will be taken up by the normal rooms. And besides killing the mobs in them, you also need to find something called secrets, which are essentially just hidden chests, items, bats, and so on. Okay, Powerliner, that's cool. But let me tell you a secret. I don't care, but you should. I realize I'm spitting a lot of knowledge right now, but basically you need as many secrets as possible to have a chance at obtaining good loot. And everyone loves good loot. Wait, no, that's that's not the right clip. There we go, that's the good clip. Okay, sit down doing the big die. There we go. Oh, 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 oh my god! <laughs> No way, no way, no way, no way, no way, no way! Okay, now we've established that I am bad, and to get better, I need to get more secrets. But here's the thing, I already know pretty much all of their locations by memory alone, and the only way I could get better is to obtain them faster. You ever watch a summoning salt speedrunning video, and he's like, and that's when Scissor Snipper 69 did this. And it's like a clip of the dude glitching through a wall or something? Yeah, that's exactly what we're gonna be doing here. High level dungeon players are effectively speedrunners. If they can save a few seconds by mining through a wall, they'll do it. If they can save a few seconds by picking up an item through a wall, instead of just going up a set of stairs, they'll do it. If they can save a few seconds by committing tax fraud, they'll probably do it too. I'm not exaggerating that much though, like look at this. This is a dungeon room, it's called Mines. It has 10 secrets, and here's how the average, run of the mill player would get them. But the average player is stupid, here's how a real gamer gets them. Now if I'm being completely honest, I don't even know what's going on. What? What am I watching? What the fuck? But I do know that it's much faster. The problem here is that if you try doing this with a normal pickaxe, you won't really get anywhere and just end up looking like an absolute clown. <laughs> you gotta be able to instamine pretty much all the relevant blocks. And for that, you need efficiency 10. But efficiency normally only goes up to 5. 
The only way to push it past 5 is by applying an item called a Silex to your pickaxe. So, in total, you need 5 Silexes. Okay, no problem. Let me just buy them real quick and... Oh! Oh no! I bought them. But now I can do all this cool stuff. Instead of having to flick this lever, going all the way up here, flicking this second lever, going all the way here, flicking a third lever, seriously, why is there so many levers in this room? And then finally getting to the chests, I can just do a bada bing bada boom, get the free chests up here, and then mine through the floor to get the rest of the secrets, and spend the time I saved staring at the new Pokemon they revealed. Holy sh**. Why is he so fat? But Powliner, doesn't that just mean you spent 60 million coins to do secrets slightly faster? Listen buddy, this is way more than just doing secrets slightly faster. This makes me way better at the game. So Mr. Interests, what do you think of the efficiency 10 pickaxe I recently purchased? It's stupid. You wasted so many coins. You, you know what? You exactly. Could have so it's a great coins. purchase. I no, mean, you heard the man. Said. Even said it himself. <laughs> and so I played some dungeons like a happy man, choosing every secret I knew how to, and later went to bed feeling like an absolute champion. But the next morning, disaster struck. My pickaxe. It was gone. I checked my inventory, then my storage, even all the chests on my private island. It was nowhere to be found. Did I insta-sell it? Did interest steal it out of jealousy? I mean, anything's possible when it comes to an item as useful as this. I had no choice and did the only sensible thing I could do, giving up on my dream of becoming a secret master. Just kidding, I bought another one, baby! This pickaxe does actually have another use. Bomb Diffuse. Bomb Diffuse is a notoriously slow puzzle, because it requires two people and takes like three years. What do I do? Okay, so the first three are left, left, left. You gotta go fast, we're gonna run out wait, of time. Wait, 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 vertical or horizontal? Think of it like a phone grid, a phone grid, Kev! Normally, you're supposed to have each player stand on one of the pressure plates to start the puzzle, work together to solve it, and then come out the back and, once again, stand on the pressure plates to finish it. But then one day, a player had a revelation. What if we didn't do any of that and just mined through the iron bars? No, seriously, just equip a silverfish pet for the haste and mine through with an efficiency 10 pickaxe. That man's name was Albert Einstein. You can even activate the pressure plates on your own by equipping an armor set with a lot of speed and just running sideways really quickly. It's very funny. But wait, Powliner. Doesn't that just mean you spent 120 million coins to do secrets and a rare puzzle slightly faster? Blah, 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 can't hear you, can't hear you. And so I started learning the gamer's secret routes one by one. Although that's obviously not all there is to Master Mode 6. Time for the boss. But it's not just him, he has men. Many men. Small men, big men, and also very big men. How's it going, small men? This is Big Guy here, calling in a very, very important favor from you all. There's a comp- The fight is split into three phases. First comes the Terracotta Army. And these guys are strong. But you know who else is strong? Not me. But my teammates are. I played the Berserker rule which, on this floor, is more of an emotional support type class. But at least I'm not alone, because so is Healer. I mean, on Healer you literally just go stand in a fire and spam your Healing Circle ability. That's it, that's all you do. Anyways, there isn't just one wave of Terracottas, they respawn. And to kill them as quickly as possible, you want to use an item called a Gyrokinetic Wand, which basically creates a gravitational pull wherever you used it, which then sucks in all the mobs around it. This makes it really good for the Terracottas. The team takes turns gyring them together, uh, except for the healer. The healer still stands in the fire. And the archer and I blast them with arrows. After that, it's pretty simple. These giants may seem intimidating with their insane stats, but here they are, and there they go. 
Then, Sadan reveals his ultimate creation, the super mega giant, who dies of cringe in 0.4 seconds. After beating this guy quite a few more times, I felt I was finally ready for the greatest skyblock challenge I've ever faced. Master Mode 7. You've got mail. New update. Skyblock levels. Every skyblock player has a level now. At level 50, you gain basic human rights. Complete various objectives and receive skyblock XP. It's the hot new thing. It even shows everyone's level in the tab menu which results in the already moronic debates between random players becoming even spicier. <laughs> and one of the main ways to gain Skyblock XP is by putting stuff in your museum. And so I did just that, and quickly maxed out the museum rewards. I bought basically everything. A decent bow can be purchased from Gregory in the Dragon's Nest for 500 coins. I spent 1.5 million for this. It does look really cool scrolling through all the completed pages though. And in the end, I got up to level 214, so I can now confidently make fun of everyone with a lower level. <laughs> Finally though, on to Master Mode 7 we go. Uh oh, another update. There's a spooky man who sells many different spooky things, most of which I don't care about. But I do want the talisman. I first needed something called fairy wings. I have no clue how to get fairy wings. But luckily, they made a guy to help you out. He says, come back in 3 days, 22 hours, 53 minutes and 29 seconds. What could he possibly mean by this? I get it. If you multiply all the numbers together, you get the number... Five. The word floor has five letters. Floor. Floor five. Dungeons. Fairy room. Fairies. Enchanted shears. Shear the fairies using the enchanted shears and boom, fairy wings. Wait, is that right? Yeah, okay, it is, it is. Naturally, I figured all this out on my own. And so, I traded the fairy wings in for the talisman. But wait, there's two more tiers. The second one required something called free spiders, which you can get by breaking the cage located in Grandma Wolf's house using an iron hammer. Problem. How does one get an iron hammer? Ooh, ooh, power liner, I know. You can probably craft it using iron and sticks. <laughs> Are you stupid? Are you are you dumb or something? Look at this guy, thinking he can craft an iron hammer with iron. I mean, everyone knows you make an iron hammer by crafting a gold and emerald hammer together. Duh! I mean, just Google it next time. Wait, what's this iron ore thing it's talking about? Boom bam, free the spiders and trade them in for the second tier talisman and we're on to the last step. But no one can figure this one out, I mean there's like 7 different items, so it seems like I'm gonna have to wait a little. And it's already on the auction house. And there's over 14,000 of them. The event hasn't even been out for a full day, come on man. How did someone figure out you have to put a hunter knife inside a potato minion and get french fries? Like come on guys, who did this? Okay, there we go. Great spook artifact acquired. Okay, this time for real. Master mode 7 time. And... And, and the game... And, and the, the game does not work. Okay. So I played Overwatch 2 instead. Now my favorite character has to be the Reaper guy. He is very powerful. Special move, honestly one of the best in the game. So he comes equipped with these two revol- Oh! Skyblock's back. Okay, finally. Time for Master mode 7 in the next episode of the Powliner Dungeon Saga. Get absolutely bamboozled. Wait, what's this? Mother